What did you expect? The last words my wife said on the phone that evening still resonated particularly strongly, even a, a year after our actual separation. I thought about them at times, with absolute lightness or with irritation. In the throes of moments in which for a few minutes I could do nothing but think about them. You're not the one leaving. I'll do it first. I won't disrespect you. I won't give you any problems. I've done what I could. And now it's better that things go in the best possible way for both of us. I'm sorry I wasn't enough. Curtain closed, I thought. Everything would have been much less painful, perhaps. Unfortunately, the only ones who knew about these and other unsaid words of mine were, quite simply, me and the dashboard of my discovery, in which I, I had been traveling for half an hour in the direction of Manduria. I left Bari at just nine in the morning, at the invitation of an organizer of cultural and food and wine events, a certain Dr. Mario Santoro. In life he was unaccounted, but he did a, a bit of everything. For some years he had invested time and energy, when he is allowed, in this world of tourism and food and wine. He had contacted me, uh, first by cell phone, and then by email, giving me all the details. It's in Uggiano Montefusco, in my masseria. As soon as you arrive, call me. At noon, we'll open the gates for you. And the conversation essentially ended there. He also spoke to me about what I would and would not do as a photographer. But I didn't give it much weight. I had with me a small suitcase with only a battle cannon, two filters, a spare telescopic lens, a 1994 tripod and two papers on the dashboard. One was the authorization given by the municipality to be able to park inside the ZTL. The other was a copy of the divorce document. Call me informally, have arrived. I remember saying something like that as I approached my destination. My attention was immediately drawn to some pallets piled up at the edge of the road, not far from the countryside where they were probably coming from. Continuing at about 20 kilometers an hour, I had a jolt of nostalgia, like a memory from when I was a child that I didn't think I had. Not far from the farmhouse, a tall, olive-skinned boy with dark, curly hair, his shirt sleeves rolled up to the elbow and his trouser pockets full of fruit on one side and tools on the other, was holding an old wooden ladder with his head bowed to a man, passing him a few elastic bands, while on the ground, not far from the ladder, there was a half-destroyed bucket full of prickly pearls, and even though I was in the car, I had the impression for an instant that I had a seed of that fruit somewhere in my mouth. They are applying some grass. That was a cherry tree. I said it almost out loud. It was the first time I'd opened my mouth since I'd left. Since I didn't say thank you and goodbye to the mermaid at the, the Medici bar near Bari Centrale. Arriving at the semi secluded farmhouse, in a labyrinth of low walls and fruit trees and vineyards, I was welcomed 
at the entrance by Dr. Santoro, his wife, and the one who must have been his daughter, who rushed to open the iron gate. Franche, watch your hands, said the mother from afar. I learned immediately that her name was Francesca. Well, young man, pretend we weren't here. There is the reception with all the services and the tables are already set. On the right, you will see the delegates of various wine companies who will be coming soon. Instead, on that side, there will be representatives of cured meats and cheeses. You have a complete carte blanche. We have already agreed on the number of photographs, after all. I didn't need to know anything else. I had already understood what kind of day it will be. Yes, 250 photos, standard rate and preferably with bank transfer. I was dealing with an accountant, after all. I didn't want to see cash flying before my eyes at the end of the evening, like some grandparents do with their grandchildren every Christmas Eve to give them the opportunity to buy toys, or even, as in my case, books. I was 30, but this job made me feel 22. All the equipment came out of the car, and I started to sort everything out. I even had a spare battery in my vest pocket, if the Canon one wasn't enough. Would you like something to drink? The wife asked me. Addressing me formally with a tone totally different from her husband's. Water, thank you. But before offering me the plastic cup, taken from a pile of many others, from the table, set with numbered seats, she wanted to introduce herself. Pleased to meet you in person. Martina, I've heard of you in and around Bari. I returned the gesture. Nice to meet you. Vittorio Gianfreda, I hope we discuss the exhibitions I try to put on display with the guys rather than me. In reality, she hadn't said those things to me by chance. Come on, you're no joking. In any case, at least in my environment, among fellow set designers and theater people, we often talk about the surrealist Gianfreda. Who knows if we don't also have some contacts in common. My ex-wife. I immediately thought, who works at the Kismet in Bari? If so, I hope there will be time for a chat about these and other topics. Why not? After all, Bari is quite small. It was there that I had to end a pleasant conversation with Miss Martina. Her husband was coming from the avenue with a quick step and awkward gait. Surrounded by middle-aged gentlemen in very elegant clothes, all men, with only two beautiful women, no more the thirty equipped with stilettos heels, and they call it dresses to accompany two very specific guests. Needless to say, they could easily have been their grandfathers rather than their fathers. Young man, what do you think? Santoro intervened triumphantly, having arrived a couple of meters away from me. I had to say goodbye to his wife's company and immediately put a cannon around my neck, removing the protective cap and, within a few seconds, positioning the tripod. I have to say a lot. I hadn't even gotten to the second point when I was tackled by the accountant, first introducing me to the girls, Manuela and Giada, who I will be taking pictures of everywhere. I'll leave them in your hands, and he turned, 
in a hasty manner to then walk away as he intuitively had to show the guests around the farmhouse before the business dinner began. The girls remained a few meters away from me. They followed me at a distance as I took photographs of the table and the lights, of the appetizer served in silver bowls and plates, sauces and jams for the cheeses, a mosaic of food, bottles of wine, ceramic crudes and pumi decorated with apparently hand-painted olive branches. Would you like some wine? the wife asked kindly returning to the scene with three glasses hanging upside down, wedged between the fingers of her left hand. You too, too. Don't be shy. She turned to the two who had just leaned back on their chairs with a slightly annoyed expression. Gladly. Just a couple of fingers of rosé for me, if possible, Manuela said while Jada simply gestured that she would take it anyway. I would have preferred a red, but the image of her opening a wine especially for me didn't make me feel good, so I followed sweet for the rosé. I'll leave everything on the table. Leave the glasses where you can't scatter them. Having said that I continued to shoot from the pergola behind the building to the perspective of the table up to the capazzoni with flowers that flanked the vertices of a gazebo where mint and basil were grown underneath. Manuela, meanwhile, followed me with her eyes. I felt that if I had asked to pose, she would have shot like a spring. Otherwise, Jada was sitting cross-legged on a desk chair near the small English lawn, lighting a cigarette while not even looking at us. At the side of the avenue to enter the accountant's kingdom, I noticed that some guests had remained to chat. They seemed like figures out of a comic book, but at the same time they had no particularity worthy of note. In fact, the more I was watching them, the more a sensation of sadness was getting the best of me. I felt my throat getting dry every second. Whenever you want, girls, I said, breaking the silence. While instead, a few meters away from us, a man, no less than six and three foot, poured us the rosé into the glasses, which we will then drink and live on a circular wooden table, not far from where we were. Manuela was a woman used to this type of works. Her body was perfectly in tune with the camera lens, her gaze was neutral, perhaps even too much. And she didn't smile, without being too serious. A very communicative facial expression, in reality, but difficult to emulate on comment. Honey, can I see how they came out? She called me honey. Who the hell even knows you? Uh, sure, here they are. But maybe we shall try with the spotlights too. She had a very strong Barry accent, there was no doubt about it. Tada! Look how beautiful they are, she said, turning towards her and gesturing to pass her the pack of cigarettes she had in the bag on the desk chair. Jada didn't have the same accent. In fact, I thought I understood she was Spanish. I'm kind of a showgirl. I usually don't put on shows. Not even evenings with old bastards. She said exactly like that. I sensed the evident anger in that old bastards. She was referring to someone in particular. Perhaps the man she was holding under her arm. It's none of your business, an internal voice told me. Almost a conscience that knew I would let her speak without asking questions. 
Jada told me that she was comfortable posing even with bare shoulders. She had seen the previews on Manuela and she liked my way of working. Maybe she understood that I was not a pervert. I thought sincerely, I am not ashamed to say, that I have come to know of cases of harassment during the sets several times. The terrifying thing is that no one, even in university environments, talks about it. I took some photographs with her then, leaning on external railings, white stone walls, old red wheels as tall as a volleyball player, carefully placed near a stable. Her legs remained impressed in my mind, very long, and with a mulatto complexion like the rest of her body. The dress she was wearing was a very bright lime color with a slit, and she was wearing very little makeup, unlike Manuela, who was sporting bright mascara and bright cherry colored lipstick. I would have edited these photos anyway, I thought. Saturation was essential. I didn't even remember if I had to go to the buffet or not to do anything else. We were far away from everything, on deck chairs placed haphazardly on an English lawn. Everything on the other side appeared dim, lifeless, as well as the voices of the guests and the owner of the house. Girls, let's move. <laughs>